What's up guys? Just getting a uh, another deer and another bait site going. Um, this is actually a property uh, probably about 30 minutes from the house, so quite a drive to uh, get on some coyotes fast, but there's no pressure, there's no human pressure at all on this property. Uh, there's no neighbor's dogs, there's nothing like we're dealing with uh, a little bit from the other bait site, plus the wind is pretty much consistent on this property for a great set. Um, we can set up and, and be quiet and uh, overall it's going to be a lot better spot than the first site. So uh, I've got a, actually a really big doe and just going to stake her up and put the camera up. Got a big storm coming in tonight, but um, probably going to be out here in, in two days, I'd, I'd say. Going to get her staked up, put the camera up and uh, we'll be out here in a couple nights. Just got up on the property. Um, camera's still firing off left and right. So I'm gonna sneak, the wind's a little bit marginal, um, but I'm gonna sneak down and pop up on a hill. It should put me about 250 yards out, um, right on top of him. Um, there actually might be multiple cops, I'm not sure. One's pretty big and it looks like there's a smaller one and not, it doesn't seem like one's necessarily on it. I'm just getting the pictures. I'm pretty sure I have this camera set on photo and video though. Um, but like I said, there might be multiple coyotes, which we'll see what happens, but I'm, I'm gonna be filming solo. Um, cam, running the camera, the camera's not through the scope or anything. Um, so <laughs> that'd be my first time running this camera in the red light by myself. So we'll see how, how it happens, but I'm gonna sneak out there and hopefully I can catch them.
pictures of the coyotes on this second bait site. I've been running one for a while, but I'm only getting one male and a, and a bobcat there. And uh, that male, that male wasn't coming in consistently. That first couple nights he was, but not on the second round. So I put another one out here. And uh, I had a big coyote and a smaller coyote. I didn't know there was going to be two, but I can't get any really. I can't get any closer. I can just crest this hill and start scanning. That's what happened. I saw them out there. They saw me. They started bouncing back and forth. 300 yards left, 100 yards right, trying to get to the right of me downwind, but they can't get downwind of me really. They have to go into a couple of sinkholes and stuff, and I knew they were going to try to stay out here in the field. But uh, he came. He was probably 50 yards when, I, when the camera started hitting the tree. There's a little bit of eye glow behind it, and then didn't have him for, gosh, it felt like five minutes. And so I just started scanning left, right, hard, and uh, he showed up, I don't know, 50 yards, less than that, right next to the camera. I barely got a shot off because the camera was in the way, but uh, yeah, we're gonna go over here and check him out and probably scan. There's a second dog here somewhere, but I'm just glad I got it done with the red light. That's so awesome.
hear something running up on top of me. Scan left. Cow is, I don't know, 45 yards to my left. I didn't even have time to pull the camera. I'm just free aimed. Shot him. Started taking off to this really thick brush pile. And uh, so I put another one into him. We're going to see if we can't drag him out. But there's one up on the deer pile. There's one just to the right of me. And there's one to the left of me. <laughs> so... Oh my gosh, that was the craziest night I've Kyle hunted I've ever had and I'm doing it all solo. I'm just scanning to see if there's any more coyotes out here. But, oh my gosh, I'm pumped. I really hope we can find him. He sounded like he ran really deep and this thing is like the biggest, nastiest, thicker bush you've ever seen. So, at most, I'm going to see some blood, but he's in here. Just going to pull him out. I might, have to, I might have to actually come back in the morning and pull him out. Just to prove it. We'll see what happens. I'm, I'm okay. I got two. <laughs> but uh, let's go see if we can pull him out. I mean, it is thick. And it's all stickers. Alright, let's go see if we can turn this white light on and pick up some blood. I think I see kind of weird. Sure enough, two two dogs are on it. Uh, got lined up. I actually waited on my angle. I don't know if it was on your angle, but I waited till both of them kind of got together. And uh, one went down and lost sight of the other one and uh, started wrapping things up again. Sure enough, I heard him running in on me. Didn't have the camera on, but uh, had to swing around freehand. And, and like I said, I put two into him. Um, so he's somewhere in that brush pile. He didn't come out. I scanned for a long time and he stopped. I mean, I could hear every move. It's so thick in there. Um, so like I said, hopefully come up tomorrow, but I mean, super pleased. It's a lot different than thermal hunting, but I mean, absolutely you can get it done. Um, that's the sniper or hog sniper uh, 66. And it is awesome. I could not, I couldn't ask for any better. So pumped. Hopefully we can find that third coyote. <laughs> All right, well, in the absolute thick of it, tore up, bleeding, but I found it. Got to turn this around here. Found it. And the dick stuff here. You see it? Yeah, you don't, do you? Oh. Oh. 
There he is. <laughs> oh. Well, got him. <laughs> Had to uh, bust through all that thick brush, but I mean, it was thick. But as you can tell, I mean, it's a pretty big little uh, briar patch. I mean, it's, I mean, it's thick. That stem is stem density is it's ridiculous to crawl through but we got them so i'm gonna go put them with the other two and i just wanted to confirm and as you guys can tell i mean that's a it's a pretty good shot i think the second one's a little bit further back but uh that first first or second one whichever it is was pretty good so surprised he actually went that deep i mean he probably went oh i'd say 20 yards deep into it maybe 30 I was just lucky where the uh, the back side here is actually open, so I can come around on them. But, yep. All right, got them all up here together. But I uh, just wanted to kind of review what happened um, so you could see it in daylight since I know I didn't do a very good job of filming it, doing a, a solo with a different camera, you know, not recording through the scope and whatnot um, but on this hill behind me here up by the dead tree um, that's where I was and actually the first male that I shot um, that I barely you know I got on camera for a split second he ran off screen uh, he actually kind of came down through the pond and then he came out this island of trees in the front here and he kind of went through that uh, that little dip in the the hill it popped up but out you know that was only 40 50 yards from me that was the first one I was actually down that's actually the group of trees that uh, was getting in the way of the camera in my view from the deer uh, the carcass here um, and I was actually behind that I moved just to the left of that and was able to get a shot straight through this this little opening here on the uh, female now the last one I just found in the thicket the uh, arguably the, the bigger dog out of the three, the male. Um, he ran actually up through this hill. He must have kicked back around or he, he exited out and went around the back of this and popped up on the top of this hill here, which I was right down there. So uh, he actually dipped down and he was running straight towards me and just shot freehand, obviously didn't have it on camera and ran straight into that nasty thicket. So yeah, pretty cool. Just wanted to review it for you guys and uh, hope to see you on the next one.